Terzepatide is everywhere right now, but most of what you're hearing about it doesn't go deep enough to actually help you make a decision on if it's right for you. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the complete picture, what it actually is, how it works, what to expect, and what nobody's telling you about the current landscape. But real quick before we go any further, just like normal, this video is not medical advice. I always recommend you talk to a licensed physician before you put anything like this into your body. All right, now that we got that over with, let me break down exactly what terzepatide is, how it works, what the research shows, and how to use it if this is something you and your doctor decide is right for you. Terzepatide is the active ingredient in two brand name drugs, Monjaro, which is FDA approved for type 2 diabetes, and Zepbound, which is FDA approved for weight loss and obstructive sleep apnea. They're both the same exact drug. They just have different labels and different insurance pathways, and they're actually both made by Eli Lilly. What makes terzepatide different from what came before it is that it works on two hormone pathways instead of just one, and that's exactly why it outperforms the other FDA-approved options like semaglutide. But keep in mind there are newer compounds in development that go even further. But as far as what's actually approved and available through a doctor right now, terzepatide is the strongest option. So let me explain exactly how it works. Terzepatide targets your GLP-1 hormone receptors. GLP-1 is a hormone that's released in your gut after you eat. And it does a few different things. Number one, it tells your pancreas to release insulin when your blood sugar rises. Number two, it slows how quickly your stomach empties. Number three, it reduces sugar output from your liver. And finally, number four, it signals your brain that you're actually full. And when you target GLP-1 receptors with a drug or peptide, your body responds as if extra GLP-1 is present. So it keeps blood glucose steady. It slows stomach emptying so you feel full for longer. It reduces your appetite and it lowers how much sugar your liver releases into your blood. And this is the exact same pathway that semaglutide works on, aka Azempic and Wagovi. Now, like I said, terzepatide also adds a second pathway. It also targets your GIP hormone receptors. GIP is another hormone released in your gut after you eat. It tells your pancreas to release insulin along with GLP-1. It helps fat tissue store energy properly, and it guides your body to use nutrients more efficiently. And when you target GIP receptors with a drug, your body responds as if there's extra GIP present. So it improves insulin release after meals by making the pancreas more responsive when blood sugar rises. It keeps blood sugar more stable by reducing the sharp spikes and crashes, and it supports nutrient partitioning by guiding fat and muscle cells to take up and use nutrients instead of leaving extra sugar or fat floating around in the blood. This dual action is exactly why terzepatide outperforms semaglutide in the research. So you're getting appetite suppression and slow stomach emptying from the GLP-1 side, and you're getting improved insulin response and better nutrient partitioning from the GIP side. Two signals working together instead of just one. Now, let me show you what the research actually found. In trials looking at people with obesity, the average weight loss on terzepatide over 72 weeks was about 21% of body weight at the highest dose. So for someone starting at 240 pounds, that's roughly 50 pounds of weight loss. 91% of people lost at least 5% of their body weight, and over half of the people they tested lost 20% or more. When researchers compared terzepatide head-on against semaglutide, Terzepatide came out at about 20% average weight loss compared to semaglutide's 14%. That's a meaningful difference. One thing to understand is that weight tends to return when you stop taking it. So this isn't a short-term fix. For most people, it requires ongoing use for maintenance, and that's mostly related to the fact that while taking it, they use it as a crutch, and they fail to implement the habits related to nutrition and exercise during their weight loss journey. But keep in mind, these are averages. Your results are always gonna depend on your starting point, your compliance, and whether you're actually in a calorie deficit. Terzepatide makes the deficit easier because you're not fighting hunger all day. It's not going to replace the deficit. Now, the benefits go beyond weight loss though. And this is important because it explains why doctors are interested in these drugs for metabolic health in general. In trials, participants saw significant improvements in blood pressure within the first four weeks, 
and continued over the full study period. They saw improvements in their lipid profile with reduced LDL cholesterol, reduced triglycerides, increased HDL, your healthy cholesterol, and their predicted 10-year risk of cardiovascular disease dropped significantly compared to the placebo. And there were significant reductions in liver fat and visceral fat around the organs. Blood sugar regulation improved across the board, better fasting glucose, better HbA1c, which is a marker of long-term blood sugar control, more stable blood sugar throughout the day with fewer spikes and crashes. These improvements are all connected. Excess body fat, especially visceral fat around your organs, drives insulin resistance. Insulin resistance drives high blood pressure, poor lipid profiles, fatty liver, and eventually type 2 diabetes and heart disease. When you reduce that fat and improve how your body handles insulin and nutrients, you improve the entire metabolic cascade. The weight loss is what you see on the scale, but underneath, you're improving blood pressure, cholesterol, liver function, and long-term cardiovascular risk. Now, let's talk about dosing. Most people start at 2.5 milligrams per week. This is the adjustment phase where your body gets used to the drug. The typical recommendation is to stay at each dose for about four weeks before considering an increase. And the available doses are 2.5, 5, 7.5, 10, 12.5, and then finally 15 milligrams. Now, I do want to clear something up because there's a misconception here. Taking a higher dose does not mean you get better results. The results come from sustained time on the drug. The reason you increase the dose is because your body builds a tolerance over time. So the dose that was suppressing your appetite in month one might not work as well in month three. So the titration is about maintaining consistent effectiveness, not chasing a bigger number. You can't just start at 12 milligrams. You'd be miserable and it wouldn't give you better results. The titration schedule you see online is a guideline. It's a starting framework. What actually matters is how your body responds. If you're tolerating a dose well and you're still seeing appetite suppression and consistent progress, there's no reason to increase just because the calendar says so. If the current dose stops working as well and you're not getting that same effect, then it may be time to move up. And on the other side of the coin, if the side effects for you are brutal at a certain dose, you have options. You can stay higher and let your body adapt or drop back down to where you were stable and try again later or increase in a smaller increment. The goal here is minimum effective dose, the dose where you're getting the results you want with the side effects that you can manage. So as far as injection protocol is concerned, typically it's once weekly, you'll do it the same day each week and it'll be a subcutaneous injection, usually in the stomach and the thigh or in the arm. And make sure that you're rotating injection sites so you don't feel like a pincushion. All right, let's spend some time talking about the side effects of terzepatide. The common ones that you should expect early are nausea, which is the most common and usually worst for the first few weeks. You're also gonna experience an extremely decreased appetite, which is kind of the point, constipation or extreme diarrhea, like I had, and some initial fatigue. You can try to manage these by eating smaller meals, make sure you stay hydrated, Always avoid greasy or heavy foods early on, and understand that the side effects typically improve as your body adapts. One thing that I will add here is that making sure that you're getting enough protein every day, especially when you have the appetite suppression, is imperative while you're on these GLP-1 medications. The typical target for most of my clients if they're trying to lose weight is one gram of protein per pound of whatever their goal body weight is. Try to make that a non-negotiable. That way you don't lose muscle while you lose the weight. Now, as far as serious side effects are concerned, again, these are rare, but you need to know them. Uh, there were reports of pancreatitis, which shows up as severe abdominal pain. If that happens, make sure you seek medical attention immediately. Gallbladder issues can occur. And if you have any history of medullary thyroid cancer or MEN2, you should not take terzepatide. Now, I just want to point out that nausea is very real for most people for the first few weeks. It usually gets better. If it doesn't, make sure you talk to your doctor about adjusting your titration. Don't just push through and make yourself miserable. But I do need to be clear about something, though. This is a tool. It's not magic. 
It's going to make it easier to stay in a calorie deficit because you're not fighting hunger all day. It doesn't replace adequate protein. It doesn't replace resistance training to protect your muscle mass. Prioritize those things and that's how you're going to get the best result and avoid the side effects. Now, let me give you the reality on cost and access because this is really interesting, especially more recently. If you're going the FDA approved route, Monjaro is the diabetes label and it's easier to get covered if you have type 2 diabetes. ZetBound is the weight loss label and coverage is much harder because many insurance plans exclude weight loss drugs entirely. If you have good insurance plus a savings card, you might pay as low as $25 a month. If you're going self-pay through Eli Lilly Direct, you're looking at $350 per month at the lowest dose. Full retail price without insurance runs over $1,000 per month for most private care. If your insurance covers it, this is a great option. If insurance doesn't cover it and you're looking at paying out of pocket, you're basically sitting at $350 to $500 per month minimum. That's the reality. You may have also heard about compounding pharmacies making terzepatide for 100 to 200 per month. That was during the FDA shortage. And if you don't know this, the FDA declared the shortage resolved in late 2024. As of early 2025, compounding pharmacies can no longer legally produce terzepatide. The FDA approved options are now the only legal pathway. And more recently, towards the end of 2025, the FDA has actually been cracking down on this, sending out cease and desist letters to compounding pharmacies violating this rule. So basically, FDA approved options are really the only legal pathway. Now, before we go any further, I do want to be very clear about what's happening here, because this isn't just about supply and demand. This is about money and control. Eli Lilly spent $23 billion scaling up manufacturing for terzepatide. And when compounding pharmacies started making it available for $100 to $200 a month during that shortage, that became a big problem for them. So they joined the lawsuit, helped push the FDA to declare the shortage over, and then started suing telehealth companies and compounding pharmacies to shut them down. The compounding industry sued back, claiming the FDA made its decision based only on information from Eli Lilly without input from patients, doctors, or pharmacies. They called it arbitrary and said it was artificially raising drug prices, which is exactly what they were doing. And Eli Lilly is already doing the same thing with Redotrutide. They're suing the FDA to get it classified as a biologic. And if they win, they get 12 years of market exclusivity instead of just five. And they can avoid Medicare price negotiations for even longer. This is 100% about protecting billions of dollars in future revenue. Here's what you need to understand about the FDA. Nearly half of their budget comes from user fees paid by the pharmaceutical companies they're supposed to regulate. The drug industry has spent billions lobbying Congress, and former FDA officials regularly take jobs at drug companies after they leave. One FDA reviewer testified to Congress that the agency treats industry as its primary client rather than an entity in need of regulation. So when you're wondering why terzepatide costs $1,000 a month while compounding versions that worked fine for hundreds of thousands of people are now illegal, this is your answer. The FDA and the United States government are not looking out for the consumer. They're looking out for the people paying the bills. But let me give you the bigger picture here. Terzepatide works on two pathways. The next evolution is retotrutide, which works on three pathways. I've actually already done a video on retotrutide, which I'll link above. That third pathway, which targets your glucagon receptors, increases fat breakdown and caloric burn on top of everything terzepatide already does. Retotrutide is currently in phase three trials, and the data so far shows about 24% average weight loss compared to terzepatide's 20%. But if insurance covers terzepatide, it's a great choice. But if you don't have coverage and you're looking at paying out of pocket anyway, you should know other options exist. Okay, look, I just gave you everything you needed to understand how terzepatide works and what to expect if you take it. But like I said, this is a tool and tools only work when the foundation is there. Inside my free community, I actually break down everything you need to build that foundation. Training, nutrition, supplementation, and yes, peptides and GLP-1s when you're ready for them. 
I have groups for men and women, and you'll find people in there who are actually doing the work, not just talking about it. If you want in, all you have to do is click the link in the description, sign up for a free account on school, and we'll get you access. One last thing before I go for the day. Make sure you drop any questions or comments below in the comment section. And if you felt like this video was helpful, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next Supplement Spotlight.